Hello, welcome back to the channel. Fulcrum video, just a little a little one of those. It's gonna ruffle feathers, just a, just a thumbnail, but you know me by now. I don't like to ruffle feathers, but I do like to get you thinking. So which is best for your hunting fulcrum bird, an imprint or a parrot reared bird? Now, I can tell you now, you might not hear it on, on camera, but I can hear one reason why I don't like imprints. But so I'm going to give you my personal opinion on what I prefer, and then I'm going to give you my opinion and some facts, um, unbiased. The difference between those two different sorts of raptors, that, that bird that you have taken from an aviary, reared by its parents, taken up at the, the age in the wild, its parents are pretty much going to kick it out of home and it's going to become independent. You're going to start there with a parrot reared bird, let's say in an enclosed aviary, never seen a human, or you're going to hand rear a little chick for yourself where you may offer it openly offer it food or try and do ways around not letting it see you bring it food but you're still going to hand rear it let's look at the two different options so my preference by far for hunting is a parent reared bird of prey i've tried i've tried i've, I've tried i've successfully really flown well in prints uh, certainly my big my big combination is goshawks of parent reared and imprints for work here at the Falkyrie Centre for pest control for education I've flown many many species of parrot reared but also many many species of imprints whether it's micro raptors like American kestrels vultures black kites owls of course um, bald eagle so across the board of all different groups of birds of prey I've flown as imprints but let me tell you now a hunting bird to me is a very different bird from a display falconry bird or an educational bird or a pest control bird. Pest control, not so much so because in a way it's hunting, but the O's of the birds, really most of the time, the air time I'm putting into them is I'm picking them up, I'm flying them for a show or an educational talk or an experience and I'm putting them down and that's it, that's it. And I'm also not trading them off of kills and having that sort of relationship with them. They're flying, doing their flying, they're getting fed they're getting the rest of their dinner when they go back to their aviaries or their perches and so on. And that's it. It's very different from spending a whole day with your bird whilst out hunting, multiple flights and one or possibly more killers where you're going to trade that bird's up bird off. And that's where I think the real difference is. Of course, flying an imprint bald eagle for displays uh, is incredibly challenging to start with. Uh, and it's whole, the whole persona of the bald eagle and everything else, how it's, how it's hardwired to be kind of semi-social when it feeds, a bit like a vulture, argy-bargy with each other. It's also an eagle, so very dominant. And then it's got no respect for it at all because it just thinks you're a sibling or its parent. But it's still very different from flying and hunting with an eagle that could be possessive over its kill and so on and so forth. So why do I prefer parent rear birds? I prefer, this, this isn't, don't get this the wrong way. This is just my, my inner feeling. It's not, it's not a fact or a statement. I find it a more pure form of falconry. I like the fact you, you're kind of taking that wild animal, as wild as it can be here in the UK when they're all capped with bread, of course, not from the wild, but that, that animal reared in seclusion, only seen its parents, never seen a human, and go through that manning process and the flying free and the flying. When it comes to hunting and flying, I just prefer that more independent nature. I prefer the quiet silentness, not incessant screaming or food imprint related noise or just association noise like that. I don't like it. Um, and to be honest, unlike my female staff here, but many of you men as well, I really don't. I really don't like imprinting and rearing birds. Oh, I just don't like it. My son, Carly, loves the whole rearing. He loves the hacking and all of that. I just want to get on with it. So I kind of, I don't want eight or 12 weeks of a bird or whatever of rearing a bird that is incredibly noisy, incredibly smelly, takes up a lot of my time feeding, cleaning, and produces oodles of feather dust when those feather shafts start to break away and the feathers unfurl all over my house. Not good for my asthma. I don't like it. They're dirty, noisy things. In fact, as I've said recently with our little baby Lily, little baby granddaughter Lily, tiny baby humans are as exciting and boring to me as our rearing hand reared birds for falconry. It just doesn't do anything for me. So straight away, I'd rather I'd rather miss that bit. Don't get me wrong, Lily's fantastic now. But that, that newborn stage where they're useless at everything, I want to get on with my falconry birds. I want to start the training and flying free. Let the parents do that and I'll fly them after. 
What do imprints give you? Well, I've, I've read many imprint birds from owls to kites to kestrels and so on and so forth. They give you, as a falconer, a hunting falconer, they give you the pleasure of rearing them and that bond, that sort of mummy and baby bond, if that's that, that's your thing. They give you that. You watch them develop. It's your, you've done more work, so you've grown that baby on and developed, which is a skill in itself. And then you've got your baby flying free and following you. You might say there's more of a bond there. I completely disagree. But to start with, yes, there is more of a bond. In the future, definitely not. But yeah, you've got that bond where you grow it up and, and you then you go on your stage and, and your journey together from a from an egg, if you like, and so on. This is where it, it matters, whether you fly an imprint or a parent reared, how good you are at either and what you want. And that's what it comes down to, which is best, what you want and what you can do. So if you're really skilled at imprinting birds silently, and you're really skilled at flying them, and you understand how they work around food and the kill, you don't need to watch this video, do you? But it might be interesting and fun. If you're really skilled at flying parent reared birds, and you enjoy them, you know you don't need to have an imprint, and so on and so forth. A lot of the imprint hunting birds came about, I don't know, I'm going to say 20 years ago. Goshawks were suddenly being bred, before then, but they were really big being bred artificial insemination. Until then, goshawks like the one I brought when I was 21 off Ray Muttock, what parent reared in seclusion. Incredibly hard. People still hadn't mastered that, that stage where the birds were both in condition and the male was safer with a female. So there were lots of losses. It was much more difficult to produce goshawks without losing your males and so on and so forth. When people understood how to artificially inseminate birds, just like the falcons for the Arabs and so on, the big falcons, as this became more of a thing, people understood how to do the same thing with goshawks. And to be honest, the goshawk breeders were then really producing and churning out lots of goshawks, lots of subspecies and so on. Uh, and I'm going to say that they told everyone that if you move up from your Harris hawk and you fly a goshawk or you fly your first goshawk, an imprint's the one for you. Being an accipiter, it won't be as highly strung. It'll be much easier to train. And for a beginner, the, the imprint bird was the way to go. Not all, but many breeders spouted that. And I would say utter rubbish. If you want to fly your first goshawk and you're not particularly a fan of imprints particularly, but you're being told to get an imprint, I would say get yourself a Finnish, pure, decent quality line of Finnish goshawk, really calm, rock steady, with none of that silly behaviour that the imprint will do for you. But that's, that's another thing for a moment. That's how I think a lot of this imprinting for hunting birds came along. Ironically, Things, watch the other video we did about the the imprinting um, Tommy's hawk, Alan, his Harris's hawk. I would have said to you, oh, what a bird to imprint. Rubbish. They're already tame and friendly. They'll be really aggressive if you imprint one as well. Turns out, not the same. So what are you able to achieve? Well, most of you, this will be your imprint. Most of you will achieve this with your imprinting goshawk, for instance. You will achieve, most people, until they're highly skilled, a very vocal bird which will drive you mad if you don't like those noisy raptors and certainly will end up with your neighbours falling out with you. It is incessant. Um, you will end up with a bird that will or certainly can leave the kill to fly in your face and attack you whilst the pheasant or the rabbit makes its escape. It's hell-bent on protecting its kill from you, its sibling, its hell-bent. It doesn't want you anywhere near it because it knows you want to eat that as much as it does. It becomes annoying. They'll fly at your face far more, far more in a rage than, than a nervous parrot reared will fly at your face. It can be very noisy, very aggressive, and it can end up screwing its tail into the ground and making a right mess. What will you get with a parrot reared gossip? If you do it right, much more silent. Although if you have that habit and routine, you come home in the mid-afternoon to fly your gossip every day, and it's keen all day. It will see you walk into your house. If it's got a window, it can see you in the house and it will probably call anyway. You've got a bird that'll be much kinder on its tail. You've got a bird that'll be much much steadier in its mind. Uh, and you've got a bird that will be just as easy to man to everything and be really settled because those imprint goshawks aren't the bird that become, you take them around everywhere while you imprint them and then they don't care about the human world. Imprint birds can be far more psychopathic far more schizophrenic, far more paranoid than any parrot-reared bird. So you don't achieve that bomb-proofness with an imprint of certain species. 
certainly helps you with the micro raptors where weight management is absolutely key. Flying a musket or a female sparrowhawk, a spa or an American kestrel at a slightly higher weight because it lacks that fear of you and that nerves of you. Yes, micro raptors, nervous kites, owls especially because their mindset is so different. But we're talking hunting birds. You can end up with all those problems. But of course you can end up with a with a parrot reared goshawk that's that you just can't get round because you're not manning it correctly and it's just a nervous wreck from you. Of course there's pros and cons, absolutely. Uh, I had a conversation with a big goshawk breeder many years ago, Lee Featherstone, very well known, very good at what he does. And when we had this, this very debate and he's a staunch imprint flyer and I'm very much a staunch parrot reared goshawker. And, and he rightly said, and this, this sums up imprinting versus parent reared after you've made a decision, decision of what you prefer and you've done a good job of either. Given time, both styles will merge and become as one. The imprint, if done correctly and given time, even if it isn't quite to start with, will lose its voice. It will become independent. If you hunt, hunt, hunt and let it achieve independence, it will become quieter. It will become much more relaxed and settled and less irate around food. The parrot rear bird will become a bird that flies at higher weights. It will become a bird that's really steady around you. It will become a bird that may well stand for you like an imprint when it's mature. The two in time done well, actually become very similar imprint versus parent rear. But there are lots of different reasons and it does come down to personal choice. With a golden eagle, you are gonna have way more aggression likely around food and a kill from an imprint than a properly parent reared eagle. Almost, almost definitely. The imprint has no respect of the human as a, as a bigger or another predator forward facing eyes six foot tall it sees you as an equal that imprint and especially a female really has no respect for you when it thinks you're coming for its food it will battle you is it as safe with other people and dogs it has no respect remember if it's flown too keen there's another point there about the imprint it doesn't respect anyone it any imprint it thinks everyone's the same species of what it is it thinks it's a safe flown and no others that have flown imprint red tail hawks Absolutely lovely around kills, not footy at all. Very vocal, but then a parrot reared red tail can be vocal. It can be nasty around food. Some birds will surprise you and it comes down to the imprinting. With a falcon, of course, many falcons are reared, imprinted for AI in the future. Personally, I've got no interest in them because I don't breed birds that way, so it would be parrot reared. But again, a falcon, a little bit keen for too long or cut too sharp or in too much of a habit and routine. My peregrine, fully parent reared. Every time it sees me in the fen in the center, yorp, yorp, yorp. The Chilean blue eagle buzzard here, fully parent reared by Jemima. It spent two years of being the worst, noisiest, screaming, imprint-like bird ever before it settled down and matured and is now totally silent. Maya, my female Aplomado falcon, not hunted sufficiently, nowhere near, flown to a law, but at the end of the day, always seeing me as for food. Went from being the perfect, the perfect parent reared bird of prey in every possible way to becoming an irate, screaming imprint for two years after. The parent reared bird can become like the worst kind of imprint, and the imprint can be as calm, steady, and chilled as the best kind of parent reared due to your training and to time. Talk to many of those people that seriously hunt with imprint birds, whether the falcons or accipiters especially, probably even eagles. And I think they'll tell you the thing that hooks them. Those people that really, these people that are passionate about flying imprints, they will tell you the hook for them is the fire in the belly. The bird will just chase, chase, chase. It will chase anything of any size and its persistence can be legendary. Thomas Mayer, Harris Hawk, Alan. It has never held a brown hair long enough for Tommy to take that prize with it. But it never stops flying them. Any parent reared male goshawk or male Harris Hawk with any brain 
and most of my red tails will quickly stop attempting full grown brown hairs. They get a kick in and they give up. The fire in the belly of the imprint Harrisok, a male, it will not stop chasing and binding to them and hanging on for dear life, but Tommy just cannot make up the distance in time. That's why people that love imprints fly imprints more than any other reason. And yet, my last goshawk, the best goshawk in the world, Eric, fully parent reared, totally silent. I've no, honestly, I know this sounds so big headed, I've never seen a better goshawk. Giving, giving game by far enough law, that bird would fly and take prey like you wouldn't believe. Its manners were impeccable. It never needed a tail guard. It was the best goshawk I've ever seen. I just love that bird so much. Gave it to a friend to breed from. Female killed it. There he went. No genes, no more genes from him. And yet that goshawk was never in your rack like my first goshawk flown sharp away. It never had its crest up. It never was. It never gripped the glove up very often, and you might have heard a squeak again, but it never went into what I would have called your rack. Goshawk crest up, fireball, fluffed up, <coughs> wanting to kill. It was so laid back. You thought you would think it wouldn't hunt anything, and yet it was dynamite. And of course, the fire in the belly of the, the male golden eagle chasing roe deer, let's say, because it's an imprint, or the male Harris Hawk chasing eight and nine pound brown hares because it's an imprint and it's got a fire in the belly. Is there any point in that? Is there any point in that? It's chasing stuff that's too big for it, that's dangerous for it, that it's probably never going to catch successfully or without a lot of trouble. Is the fire in the belly worth anything? To me, it's not, because I have parent reared birds that are equally as driven to hunt without any irateness about them uh, and learn that things that are too big are too big, which I think is fair enough. But of course it is, again, it's personal preference. It's what you want from your full Camry. And it's, it's, it is that simple. So for me, imprints are a really good idea, whatever, are the micro raptors, the American kestrels, the sparrowhawk, sharpsins, those kinds of things that have a critical, critical weight management that, and certainly the small accipiters are also highly strung and nervous birds. Imprint, every, I'd, I'd all say to everyone, take one, use an imprint, employ an imprint. Goshawks, certainly the European goshawks, there's no need to fly an imprint. That's your personal choice and nothing else. Don't be hoodwinked into thinking you should fly an imprint goshawk because it'll be easier. If you're a novice with goshawks, for goodness sakes, don't fly an imprint. Get yourself a nice finished race, nice steady race of goshawk. You'll do much better and you'll enjoy yourself far, far more. But that's that's it. It is down to preference. Nothing more. An owl, of course, 99.9% .9 of you, you're not going to be hunting with an owl. So we don't need to worry about these amazing imprinted nocturnal raptors. Beautiful as they are. Yeah, best avoided. Unless you really want to fly an owl for hunting. So they're just molting out now, Alan and Zara. So Zara's fully parent reared, 100%, perfect parent reared bird. And yet, three years ago, that bird would stand for me on a loop, loop perch design, loop, loop, a loop, Dave, stop it, a loop perch design. She would stand, uh, I didn't inseminate, I hadn't done anything, but she could have been inseminated, and she even laid eggs for me on a perch, fully parent reared. These birds merge over time. So Zeus has got a pile of food, he's molting, pile of chicken today. Look at that, he doesn't want me to have it. Fully parent reared. This time of year, yeah, he's like, get off. He's actually got hold of the ground, how hilarious. There he goes. What about all these? So, it's horses for courses. The bald eagle, he's good. He's good now. But golden eagles. It would always, for me, be parent-reared. I just love that whole 
Manning training, very easy with a golden eagle, apparently read well. But I love that sort of side of things. And just the pureness. But of course, that when I say pureness, remember, that's just in my head. Many of the Mongolian people, the people that really pioneered, pioneered, e pioneered eagle falconry, hunting eagle falconry. Many of those guys, what are you doing? Started by removing chicks from a nest ledge and training those up, imprinting those noisy things. Do your research. Do your research well. Talk to unbiased people and really think about what you want to achieve and what, what you want to live with and have around you. Don't get an imprint because you think it would be nice to have a cute fluffy chick for a while. That's just stupidity. Two or three months of that, a lifetime of a fully grown bird, Think about what you want. Think about your neighbours. What a muppet has got hold of his running line. Hey. Think about your neighbours. Think about your family. Think about your own sanity. And think about your own falconry. Research further, as always, before making a rash decision. Get a bird you want to keep forever, not one you want to chop and change with. Guys, please subscribe and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Don't forget to check out the playlist. We've got the vlogs and reptile and exotics as well as many, many other talkery videos. Thanks for your support, guys. <laughs> <laughs>